Shabbat Shalom from Temple Concord. This week our Torah portion talks all about the amazing events at the sea, when the waters are parted and the Israelites pass through, and then the waters come crashing back down on the Egyptians, and our ancestors are finally a free people, and finally able to start their journey on the other side of the sea, and soon will come the moments of Sinai and all of the glorious events of, of the journey. But at this moment of that transition of deciding to cross the water and then crossing and then being free, there's a fascinating little piece uh, that the Hasids actually picked up. There's a Hasidic tale that uh, a woman goes to the rabbi and says, I, I want to pray. And the rabbi says, well, have you, have you tried believing? And you know, where's your faith? And, and the woman said, well, you know, in the Torah, this Parsha, it mentions that first God does something, then we have faith. And sure enough, if you look in chapter 14 of this week's Torah portion, you see that in verse 30, God rescues the Israelites, and the Israelites are able to cross the sea. And then in verse 31, the text notes, it's only after that rescue that the Israelites truly had faith in God and recognized what God could do for them and the power of the Almighty. It's a fascinating statement about our people and about faith. Do we have faith on our own, or do we need to have evidence of some great power first? And what is that evidence? There are wonderful midrashim about what happened that day. One is that the Israelites crossed over and they're celebrating, and God looks and says, what are you celebrating for? Don't you see my children, the Egyptians, are drowning in the sea? And then the Israelites realize the importance of humanity in general. Well, juxtapose that with this earlier Hasidic tale. The Israelites are celebrating when they shouldn't be celebrating, and they don't have faith until the event has actually occurred, not beforehand. Which way is it? Should we be people who believe automatically and see the, the sanctity of each person? Or are we people who are a little bit thick-headed, who need to have proof first, who will celebrate at someone else's demise because it helps us succeed? They're interesting challenges. And even though these texts were written thousands of years ago, the essence of those challenges remain. How many of us function in a world where we have faith without seeing proof first? It's something we wrestle with all the time. And how many of us are willing to celebrate when something good happens to us without recognizing that something bad may have happened to someone else to allow that good to happen to us? This too is a part of our human condition. And as Jews, we're taught to wrestle, to engage in that challenge, and to figure out what the answer is. This Shabbat, I hope you'll spend time with us here at the temple as we wrestle with those issues. And the notion of the birthing of our people crossing that sea, breaking out of the water, and emerging as a free people, able to chart our own course. What kind of course are we going to chart? What lessons will we take with us? How will we understand and respect the divinity of the Almighty and also the sanctity and divinity of each of us as human beings? I hope you'll join us for services. Services this, e this Friday evening will be at 6 o'clock. Our adult choir will be leading us in worship. Saturday morning we have services at 11 preceded by Torah study at 10 and text study at 9. Next week, our scholar series will continue with Michael Barkin on Tuesday evening at 6. Promises to be a wonderful evening about conspiracy theories and all sorts of interesting topics. Uh, and next week, we will celebrate Shabbat services at 6 o'clock. And in the coming weeks, we have another in our film series um, and all sorts of wonderful events at the temple. For now, keep warm, and I hope you'll join us as we delve into what it means to be a free people and what values and, yes, what faith undergirds our sense of ourselves as Jews and of ourselves as humans. For now, Shabbat Shalom. Look forward to seeing you at the temple.